Hey, it's Jeff. Welcome back to another video. Today I'm going to be doing just some basic plant care as well as watering. I've been on holidays for the last month, so I got to go back to work in a couple days here. So I just want to make sure everything is looking healthy, everything is well watered before going back to work. Look at this old girl. And you're just resting. Here is my beautiful Ficus Elastica Taniki or Tenica, however you want to pronounce it. Um, I did check the soil. It is bone dry. Oh, and there's a leaf. Dead leaf. Okay, so it looks like it's a smaller leaf. So I'm assuming it's an older one. I'm gonna look this plant over for any bugs or anything like that as I give it some water. But for my larger plants, I like to take them outside when I can. Obviously it's summer right now. So I'm gonna take this one outside. I'm gonna spray it down with the hose. That way it just uh, cleans off the leaves here as well. That way the uh, green portion, all the chlorophyll um, can absorb as, as much sunlight as possible. And I can't remember when I last fertilized this, so it is still actively growing. It's getting some new growth right there. So I may give it some fertilizer as well. So I'm gonna take this outside and uh, do a little more investigation. It's got some like little brown spots on the edges here. That's not leaf burn. This is most likely due to a watering issue. So I'll have to take it outside, but uh, the leaves feel really flimsy. They don't feel as, uh, as thick and luscious, I don't know, <laughs> as they normally do. So I know this needs a good thorough watering. For these larger pots here, I would suggest either getting a moisture meter, and if you don't have one, I simply use a bamboo skewer or a bamboo stick. And what you do, because you wanna know if the soil moisture lower in the pot is, uh, is staying wet, because sometimes uh, the top of the soil might be dry, uh, but the lower portion takes a little bit longer for the plant to use up all that uh, excess moisture and water. And if you're not using a terracotta pot, um, it doesn't have any way to evaporate as well. So I use these bamboo skewers. You simply just place it in the pot, stick it all the way down, leave it there for about 30 seconds to a minute, and then you uh, pull it out. And sometimes you can see there's a little bit of uh, soil at the bottom of the stick here. And sometimes you can actually feel the moisture level on the stick. So it's a little bit wet, just at the very, very bottom. So this one will definitely need some water as well. The leaves and everything will still look really healthy, but yeah, if you don't want to go out and buy a moisture meter, this is a, just a nice, easy little cheap trick, I guess, to test the soil moisture lower in the pot. It's pretty windy here today. Uh, I'm trying to keep my plant under this umbrella and the shade, but this thing's just going like crazy. Hopefully it doesn't get torn off, but I always like to spray off my plants in the shade. Oh, okay. That's crazy. Okay, so anyways, I like to spray off all my plants in the shade, just because when you put water on the leaves, I don't want the sun to absolutely scorch or burn the leaves. So I'm gonna do my best here, but I'm just gonna grab my hose and we'll spray it off quickly, give it some water. And then I might, uh, like I said, give it some fertilizer. So I have the hose on the shower setting. You just want to have enough force to blast off any dust or any like uh, spider mite webs or that sort of thing. Didn't see anything when I gave it a quick little once over, but you can see it's getting some water as well. So I'm going to spray upwards a little bit and just clean these leaves off. For some of my larger plants, I've been using the Foliage Pro uh, 936 uh, Nitrogen Phosphorus Potassium. You want higher nitrogen as you want more or you want to stimulate uh, more foliage or leaf growth. So, so far my plants have been liking this, uh, I guess, fertilizer. So I uh, put a little bit in the watering can here. It's a one liter. So let's give it some water. And all I do is just water it like I normally would. So it does have uh, some water obviously from the hose, but just to kind of go around the pot and just give it some water, let that soak through. We'll probably give like half a can. It's coming out the bottom of the drain hole there. So that's all I'm gonna give it. And uh, we'll just let that kind of drip dry and then we'll move on to the next one. This is my other just regular green Ficus Alaska. I know this one needs some water as well. The soil is really dry. So I'm just gonna use the rest of this fertilizer on this plant. And then I'm gonna give it some more water, let that soak in. Okay, let's go fill this up. Okay, and if you've watched any of my other watering videos, I use a filtered tap water, or this is like a drinking tap. It has like a small little toggle. You can pull this 
and all the water runs through the filter. You have to change out the filter about every three months or so. You just buy some reusable or re replaceable cartridges off of Amazon or whatever store you bought this from. Just let that fill up and we'll give it some more water. Like I said, normally I take these larger plants outside, but you can get to be a little bit much if you're constantly moving all these plants around. So I'm just going to be watering it in its uh, current position, a little saucer. I'm just going to keep an eye on, make sure it doesn't overflow, but just going to let that soak through. I can come back and give it some more water if it needs. This one too. Um, actually, I might take this one out after the melanie. I know I've given all my Syngoniums and Aglaenema some water. I just watered them a couple days ago. They're looking a little bit droopy. This one's taking a little bit longer to uh, kind of bounce back, but Otherwise, everything looks good here. Beautiful foliage on this uh, Golden Madonna. I'll take this one over to my watering station. The pot feels really light as well, so I know it'll definitely need some water. I like using this little uh, drip tray. That way it catches all the uh, excess water flowing out through the bottom. That way I can really soak the soil if it needs it, and I don't have to worry about it uh, kind of overflowing on those uh, little saucers. So this one is usually a pretty thirsty plant. It's in a smaller terracotta, so I'm not surprised that it dries out fairly quick. So I kind of keep an eye on this one fairly close. I don't want it to dry out. You can see it's already coming out the bottom of the drip hole here, but I'm gonna make sure that all the soil is completely saturated. Look how fast that drained down. So this is the soil mixture that I use for most of my house plants. It's a uh, pro mix tropical soil. Um, with some extra perlite as well as uh, I often use orchid bark so the ProMix orchid bark and it comes with perlite and charcoal already in the bag and that just allows for a really good uh, draining mix. Usually it's fairly difficult to overwater a plant if it's in the correct soil. If you're just using like a regular potting soil just by itself holds on or retains a lot of moisture so um, that's why plants typically die quickly is the uh, soil holds on to too much moisture and it uh, leads to root rot. So if you have it in a good soil, you shouldn't have any issues with root rot. Here's a couple newer additions to my collection. This is the Diefenbachia. I believe this is the Seguin. Um, I'm not entirely sure, but I got this as a, a one little stem and uh, it's, it just has absolutely beautiful leaves. Look, look at these. This one will need some water. I find these uh, Diefenbachias I have to keep a closer eye on as they tend to get thirsty pretty quick. But I, like I said, I like using terracotta because it doesn't allow the soil to remain wet for too long. I forgot my watering jug here. Here. Okay. Let's give this some water, let it soak through the bottom. All right, this is a little slower than I'd like to see drain through. So when that happens, um, I like to take the pointy end of a skewer and just kind of break up the soil a little bit. That way it helps the water kind of disperse throughout the soil. I don't like jam it in. Like if I'm feeling resistance in the soil, like right now it's all the way to the bottom. If I'm feeling resistance, like right there, I won't push down anymore because I don't want to damage any of the roots. I don't want the plant to suffer, but I just want to kind of break up the soil. It doesn't really feel condensed or like really rock solid, but you can see there's some dry soil that uh, whenever I push the uh, skewer in and bring it up, you can see it's all dry soil. So I just want to make sure that the plant gets watered evenly and the water just isn't flowing out the sides of the pot, like in between the pot and the soil. So I'm gonna give this some more water now that there's a few holes in it. Let's see if that uh, helps with drainage a little bit better. Not needing a repot because I just potted this up like a month ago. There you go. Now it's soaking in. I'm gonna be watering my Hoyas as I wanna do a Hoya collection video. So instead of pulling them all off the shelf, I'm just gonna simply water them in their little pots and saucers. Let's see how that goes. Also, I'm gonna give my CB Blue some water as I know it's really dry. And the pot is super light, so. Like I said, sometimes it gets to be just a little bit too much when you have to pull all the plants off the shelves, take them over to the watering station or wherever and, uh, and give it some water. But my Scandapsis Jade Satin was watered yesterday. Some of the leaves were looking a little bit uh, curled up, so the soil was dry. 
Definitely needed some water. My Peperomia angulata. Actually, I'm gonna bottom water this one. Okay, so I lost another leaf on my Australis Lisa, so let's take it out and see what we're dealing with here. This one always, I don't know, I find the Australis Lisa kind of a difficult one to care for, honestly. Let's see, I'm just making sure that there's no bugs or insects on this plant, as that can be a reason for leaf drop, but also if you let the Hoya get too dry, it tends to shed a few leaves. So it's looking really healthy. Everything looks beautiful on it, but uh, occasionally I will find a leaf that'll just kind of drop off. So make sure you look in between or underneath the leaves and stems. I know a lot of these plants, these Hoyas are susceptible to mealybugs. So if you see any kind of white little fluffy cotton-like powder stuff on your plants, specifically like on the leaves or, you know, in little crevices. Just make sure you don't have mealybugs. So it looks like this is where I lost the leaf from. So for whatever reason, it's decided to drop the leaf. Uh, jade plant, that one's okay. This one, just give it some water. Yeah, let's check out the uh, plants on the ledge. And I know I watered all my Hoyas up here. I'm gonna pull this Hoya plant down here in a second. Suspicious. Bring this one down. This Hoya compacta has been giving me some grief. It was growing really, really well for a long time, and now it's not. Look at this leaf. Okay. Take the yellow off. This one. This is about maybe the fourth or fifth leaf I've had to pull off. I did lose a lot kind of at the bottom, and that's not really that uncommon. As a plant grows, it tends to shed a few of the lower leaves. This one dries out really fast, so I don't know if it's just getting too big, too fast. See, like this one's gonna die off. There you go, just snaps right off. Doesn't look wrinkly. This is a really tough plant to see if there's any bugs in there because of all the little crevices it has in the leaves. There could literally be you know, a million bugs in there. No, that's not a mealy bug. But I just realized, look at how fuzzy, oops, look at how fuzzy these leaves are. Look at these little hairs. <laughs> I love little fuzzy leaves. Maybe if I keep it zoomed in like this, I can see in all the cracks. This plant, you know what? I'm actually gonna take this out of the pot. I'm gonna make a video of it soon because I just wanna see what's going on with the roots. I always say that on my channel, if you have an issue with the plant for whatever reason, um, it's dying back, it's getting yellow leaves, pull it out of the pot, check the roots, see what's uh, going on there first. This soil has always been really, really kind of dense, compact, so it's definitely time to take it out of the pot. Maybe it's super root bound, I don't know. Oh yeah, I have to show this Hoya Wayetii. I'm just gonna bring it down so you can see it a little bit closer. Like that. Here is my little plant chair my uh, aunt in Calgary uh, gave this to me. It's from Ikea. It's just a perfect little gardening stool. Look at this. So this is the Hoya Wayetii. It's got some, I guess, sun-stressed coloring along the edges and this is absolutely beautiful. And look at, it's given me a couple peduncles. Let's see if I can focus in on this. It's gonna flower here soon. Crazy, and there's one down here too. Yeah, I gotta take care of my umbrella here. It's Holy cow, this thing's literally gonna blow away. It's always windy here in Saskatchewan, so. Okay. Let's get it down. It hasn't been windy like this for a while, but. Okay, I'll bring another plant outside here in a bit, but for right now, I'm just gonna take that umbrella down before it blows away. Pickles, you coming in? Pickles, come. Come on. Okay, you stay. I'm gonna take this melanie out here shortly. Uh, okay, let's check out the rest of the plants here. This jade is okay. 
there, I think. Yep, yeah, my golden, or this is the green papaya. Let's give this green papaya some water. Look at the foliage on this. Put it in my watering tray and give it a nice thorough watering. I always say aglaenemas or Chinese evergreens are super underrated. They're fairly common, but uh, there's a few varieties. Like this one, you don't see very often. Like this is, like I said, the green papaya. You can find it in like smaller plant shops, more like specialty ones, but there is uh, some more common ones like the Silver Bay, like this guy over here. You can pretty much find this uh, like at any big box store, Rona, uh, Lowe's, that kind of thing. Um, this one, a little more rare. This is the Silverado. Again, just uh, look for the uh, plant shop stuff, but if you're wanting an easy care plant that really doesn't require much, try an Aglaenema. I love them. Big tropical leaves, they're beautiful. Okay, these Hoyas, the leaves, they're not flimsy. This is the Matilde, this is the Rebecca, this is the Crimson Princess. Over here, I got another princess that I took some cuttings off. This is my sunrise. Definitely needs to be watered here. This one always flowers for me. It's getting some new peduncles there. It's got a few there as well. But look at these leaves, sun-stressed. They're just like a, a deep red. A little bit of yellow in there. Okay, I'm just gonna... This I have to fix up. I don't know what uh, what's going on with this, but my little trellis is is bending quite heavily. So I'm gonna have to do something about that here pretty soon. I don't know if it's due to the weight of the plant itself or if the, uh, the hot south sun is actually melting and maybe warping, maybe a combination of both, I guess. This is still in the original red pot, which I wanna switch it out to something a little bit more, I don't know, appealing, I guess. I'll let that uh, drain through and then I'll put it back in the in the window. My sense of very Whitney, feeling a little flimsy there, so I'm gonna give this some water as well. Actually, I'm gonna show you another sense of very here that I have at my front door. It's a north facing window, and there is a porch that uh, obviously covers the front there as well. So basically, that sense of very gets no sunlight at all, and I have not watered it, I swear, since the winter. So this one I know has not had any fertilizer, so I'm going to be using just a very mild. Uh, 111 indoor plant food uh, on the back it says just to give it like four pumps or four squirts in one liter so i'm just going to mix that up give it some fertilizer and uh, that way the plant gets some uh, nutrients continues to grow it's got uh, two pups there two side pups or two new growths they're coming in just beautiful just flawless like this leaf right here look at this the variegation is beautiful. Okay, let that fill up. And I know sometimes people will say that you should uh, water just with straight water before you give it fertilizer, but I don't know, I just water my plant as I normally would with the fertilizer. If you're using something strong, like a, a, a higher nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium number, then maybe I would dilute that a little bit more or I would give the plant some water and then add some fertilizer. But with these smaller house plants, like I find even just watering it with the fertilizer, it, uh, it kind of drains out the bottom fairly quick. So I don't want to like, like overwater or completely soak it, if that makes sense. I don't know. Leave it down in the comment section how you fertilize your house plants. If you give it water first and then fertilizer, or if you just water it like you normally would. I'm curious to see what you guys do as a uh, fertilizing routine. I have this little Tupperware container here and it serves as a dual purpose plant tool, I guess. Um, I will sometimes water or bottom water house plants. So if it's in a pot like this, I'll just put it in a container uh, that's a little bit smaller, fill it up, um, almost to the top and just let the plant soak it up. Or I also put it in this tray after giving it some water. So I put it in the tray like this and I carry it to like the plant stand or wherever its little saucer is just so it doesn't drip on the floor. Right now I can't do it obviously because I got one hand on the camera and one hand here, but I just use this just so it doesn't drip all the way to, uh, to where it's placed and then I have to wipe up the floor. So I'll use this little Tupperware just so it doesn't drip. 
So here's that sense of area. Here's our front door. It's covered by a porch. It basically gets no sunlight at all. It's still like it's not really, whoops, I got a little dirt on my hand. It's not flimsy or anything like that. Like it's still remaining upright, but I swear, like I have not watered this since probably February. Here's all my pothos. Oh, this guy's looking really droopy. Yep. Oh man, I definitely need some water. It's getting some yellow leaves here. So, okay. Whoops. So this is what a pothos that severely needs water looks like. It's got no bounce to it. Um, here's a yellow leaf. Anytime, like I said, I find a yellow leaf, I always like to inspect it for any bugs or insects, but this soil is bone dry. So I'm just gonna remove this leaf. Come okay, on. Usually just snaps right off like that. Here's another one right there. Oh boy, it's got a few. Let's give this a good soaking. This is my Marble Queen Pothos and it's in a ceramic pot without a drain hole. So this one I tend to pay a little bit more attention to uh, if I see the leaves kind of starting to sag a little bit like they are right now and the soil is dry, I'll give it some water. But uh, this one, I'll just give like maybe a little bit of water on top and just let that soak through. Just something like that, if you can see it. Yeah, I just basically pay attention to the leaves and the weight of the pot. That's how I know when this one needs to be watered. Look at these leaves on this one. It's got like almost a completely white leaf. It's got some green variegation on this. This plant's not in like a very bright spot. So I'm kind of surprised by the amount of variegation on this one. I don't know if this is uh, like, I don't know what it's called, the Snow Queen. I don't know if that's what this one is or not. If there's two different varieties in here, but Beautiful variation on this one. These ones I know have been watered as well. I think so. Actually, yeah, this one's uh, a little bit on the damp side still. So this is my Neon Pothos. Got another Marble Queen back there. This is a cutting from the other plant that I just showed you. Here's my Scandapsis Jade Satin. This one has had water, so that's a little bit on the damp side. This Exotica, actually this is pretty dry. So I'm gonna give this one some water here in a bit, but Actually, I might leave it. The leaves, they're not folding in yet, so this one's okay. Here's my Eglinema Cutlass. This one's beautiful. It's looking okay now. Actually, these need some water. Hey, my uh, Eglinema Emerald Beauty is flowering. I typically cut these off because I don't want the plant to focus its energy on flowers. Like, look at this, it's, it's boring nothing to be excited about. So I like to cut them off just so it uh, focuses its energy on leaf growth or leaf production instead of the flowers. So, okay, this one's looking a little bit droopy. Let's take this one over and give it some water. I'm gonna cut this flower off and I just cut it wherever I can get uh, access to. So I just cut it off. The portion that uh, is still remaining on the plant that will turn yellow, it'll dry up and basically you can just pull it right off. Still getting some leaves here, so that's kind of surprising. Okay, I just filmed the whole explanation about cutting flowers off. I watered this plant only to realize it wasn't recording anymore. My SD card filled up. So this one's been watered. Let's move on to the next. Just wanted to show this here real quick as well. This is my Aglinema Cutlass. It is absolutely beautiful. And in a recent, I can't remember what it was, if it was a watering video or a plant tour or something like that, I had another unidentified Aglinema. Someone said that this was a Cutlass. Um, in fact, it is not because this is a cutlass and you can see just how different the leaves are. This is almost like a cutlass shaped leaf, like it's very long and narrow, but it's got the pattern of like the, uh, the Maria or the Emerald Beauty. But this one is so unique, like it's, it's just slightly different and I'm not too sure which variety it is, but uh, both. These are absolutely beautiful plants. This cutlass is a cool one. Very cool, but yeah, I just wanted to show that here quickly before I give my uh, cutlass some water. So if you know what this one is, obviously it's a, a combination or like a hybrid, but if you have this one or if you know what it is, uh, just leave it down in the comment section. I'd love to know which variety this was. Let's give this one some water, see if I can get in there so you can see. Again, this is just in a well draining mix. Oh geez, I got a lot of perlite in there. I'll judge usually by the weight of the pot if I need to give it more water because it uh, comes out the bottom fairly quick. 
See, it's coming out the bottom there. So I might give it a little bit more water. I'll focus. And then I'll set it back in its uh, spot on the piano. So I'm gonna finish off the video with uh, spraying down my Ficus Lastica Melanie, give it a little bit of water. Just clean off the leaves. Here's my Syngoniums. They're doing well in the pot. Got another, I think I got, no, it's not a new leaf, but. Uh, here's my little beneficial insects pack. I'm gonna take that out because I think they're pretty well done anyways. They've been in there for a couple weeks, so. It's gonna spray off the underside of the leaves as best as I can. And that'll be it for this video. If you have any comments or questions, please leave it down below. Let me know what you thought of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Thanks again for the support. Take care, everyone. Bye.